Hey guys, so one of the most interesting moments in TPG history is when Anthony does the blackout. He has to admit that he did wrong. And then he basically travels to Los Angeles for, I believe, the first time that we see him there. And the idea is he's going to do an interview with producer Michael. Producer Michael rejects the interview, which was already preset. Him, Anthony and Marco had already made the plane trip visit, so they kind of wasted their time uh, in some aspect. Yeah, they thought they were going to see producer Michael, and they did not see producer Michael. So that was a little bit surprising and jarring for those two to learn via Instagram that producer Michael does not want anything to do with him. So then he says, you know, who else do we know who's a YouTuber in LA who can help our image? Oh, um, I know a dude. His name is Peter Marco. And our employee one, Dylan, he is Peter Marco's like biggest fanboy. Biggest fanboy ever. Why don't we get uh, Dylan to go ahead, uh, go with us, and then he can tell Peter Marco how amazing he believes he is. This went very, very poorly. Initially, Peter Marco wouldn't even let him into the store. These are uh, fake smiles, right? Fake smiles, fake grins, and fake... Supposedly, they were supposed to do uh, get in touch later that day and have dinner or hang out, which, of course, Anthony being the clout chaser he was at by then, he absolutely 100% would have filmed it, right? So back to Peter Marco and why he knew. Peter Marco, uh, one of the things he mentioned in the video, he's been in business for over 20 years, right? Um, and that is uh, a lot of, I mean, it's a very interesting thing where somebody with that reputation is looking at Anthony and saying, you know what, this guy is not it. You know, I don't want him in my store. I don't want to make content with him. I'm not going to ever produce content. And this was the time where he paid Theo and Harris a lot of money uh, to do content to interview him. So they were paying, they probably offered him quite a bit of money and it was turned down by Peter Marco because he didn't want to deal with Anthony shenanigans. Again, Theo and Harris later would come out and say, hey, uh, we were bamboozled. We, we didn't really know very much about this guy. He already paid all this money. But they were paid out anywhere between ten to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars if you include the nice meal they were offered. And um Pia Marco just probably said, No, man, I am uh I'm good, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say no to your offer. And that was the end of Anthony in Los Angeles. So the first trip that he had to Los Angeles was actually very Subtly quite bad. Like, subtly it was quite bad. Uh, he wanted to meet producer Michael. Producer Michael said, no, get the F out of here. He wanted to do some content with Peter Marco. He said, no, people were not very thrilled to make content with him anymore, which is, a again, something that he probably never bumped into because he had Roman and so on. So while Roman was, while Roman was chatting him up and stood by his side... Um, Peter Marco said, no, you know, I'm not going to, uh, do this, right? I'm not going to do this. So anyway, uh, it's not impossible to identify like the Liz and the Darby's and the, there are people, employees, Mike Rubin, the Jimmy's and Marco's, it's not impossible for them to, for them to, uh, do that. Uh, to be quite frank, in fact, I would even argue that in many of these cases, it was actually easier to detect that he was a fraud than not, right? So when we talk about telltale signs, one telltale sign would be people like Peter Marco not wanting to deal with individuals like Anthony or even Marco or even, you know, <laughs> it's just a... um crazy thing to see where he's trying to be nice to him but in the nicest way possible he's trying to say just f off i i don't want to deal with you today 
it's interesting, right? It's definitely a fascinating thing where many of the people in in uh, the watch industry, some of them love Anthony, some of them don't love Anthony, and the ones that don't love Anthony, they really don't love Anthony. So again, kind of interesting, and definitely something that would warrant you to look at and say, you know what, I, I think that there's something wrong here. I think there might be something wrong with um, how this guy's acting and behaving and what he's doing. Um, does it make sense for me to make content with this individual? And the answer, of course, is no. So it wasn't like Paul Ford, Paul Roman Scharf, or any of these other individuals. I mean, at, after the blackout, the um, yeah, after the blackout, um, the issue would be whether or not you have the ability to um that this reputation can you last for twenty years, Anthony? That's kind of the question, right? Can you last for 20 years? It's interesting. Definitely interesting, in my opinion. At some point in time, some people said, yes, we want to do with, uh, we want to go ahead and hang out and we want to make content with you. And at some point in time, they don't. So definitely interesting to see in a very clear video, which actually is published by Anthony, of course, that people don't want to deal with him at all. That they are, even at this point in time, unwilling to even let him through the door. That he had to talk to a social media guy. Social media guy then has to talk to Peter. And then Peter's like, oh, well, they're not leaving. They're just kind of like scaring my business away. They're just kind of like standing. They're like these people, the free people in like TPG t-shirts standing in front of my door. Like homeless people, right? Eventually, Anthony would become homeless. So maybe that was a little foreshadowing. Uh, okay, fine. Let them in when no one can see. We'll talk to them for a little bit. And hopefully, they go away and they never come back. That was uh, exactly um, exactly what happened, man. It was uh, pretty uh, crazy. It's pretty crazy. And at the end of the day, it was the reality of Anthony Farrar. Not everyone thought he was a hero of the watch community. Not everyone thought he was a good guy. Some people saw him for what he was, which was a criminal sitting in jail. And Peter Marco, uh, producer Michael, they were both individuals who exactly knew who, who they were dealing with. In fact, um, yeah, producer Michael... He wouldn't even meet with him. He wouldn't even do the courtesy of meeting with Anthony. And in, in turn, they're right. Versus Paul Forp and Roman Scharf, right? And how they treated him and defended him to the core. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye, guys.